The simple fact that you are here now and watching this means you want to do something. You are concerned. And even if your actions only start today, you've already joined the community and are part of the movement for change. Along with those who want to help slow down and eradicate the tipping point where climate change could decimate the world's water, food and energy resources. And put like that, it can sound like a monumental and irreversible task, but it's not. There's an old Chinese proverb, the person who moves a mountain begins by carrying small stones. Or to quote Prometheus, big things have small beginnings. So don't be overwhelmed by the task at hand. Let us work together. Let us go beyond sustainability, help reverse climate change and aim for impactful change. Maybe you're thinking already about changing your behaviour towards eating meat and embracing a more plant-based diet or considering growing your own food. You've started upcycling and leading a zero-waste lifestyle or maybe you don't know where to start. You've likely heard that it can take approximately 8,200 litres of water to grow enough cotton to make just one pair of jeans. And the chemicals used in the dyeing process can be dumped or seep into our rivers, so not only depleting the planet's most important resource, because remember we can't simply live without water, but also potentially polluting that what's left. Now, according to a report by the Soil Association just a couple of days ago, we mostly underestimate the full environmental impact of cotton, thinking it takes only 314 litres of water to make a t-shirt. But in fact, the true figure is more like 2,700 litres. And that's rather worrying. Yet buying a certified organic cotton t-shirt rather than an ordinary one could save a staggering 2,457 litres of water. And as a minimum standard, the cotton that reaches you, the consumer, will be free from genetically mod modified organisms, fungicides, biocides and other toxic chemicals. Add to that, certified organic cotton ensures working conditions are safe and hygienic, with freedom of movement for workers, with the right to collective bargaining, there is no child labour, fair wages are paid, working hours are not excessive, therefore there is no forced labour. So switching to organic cotton is a sustainable option and an ethical one too. So what other good sustainable choices can we make? There are so many fantastic materials that we can use in our everyday existence and one base plant material can be used in almost inexhaustible measures. Take bamboo for instance. There are over 1,000 species of bamboo growing in both tropical and temperate environments. It is grown without pesticides or chemical fertilisers. It requires no irrigation. It rarely needs planting, replanting. It grows rapidly and can be harvested in three to five years. It produces 35% more oxygen than an equivalent stand of trees. It sequesters carbon dioxide and is carbon neutral. It is a critical element in the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's an excellent soil erosion inhibitor. Its production into fibres has lower environmental impact than any other form of fibre, especially synthetic ones. It can be used in the building of bridges and roads and houses. It can be used for scaffolding, to make furniture, bicycle frames, kitchenware and utensils, musical instruments, fishing rods, toothbrushes, sunglasses, paper, nappies, carpets and rugs, shoes and accessories, towels, bedding, toys. It's used in Asian cookery and in China and Japan it's charcoal is used for fuel and the bamboo vinegar extraction alone can be applied for many purposes including cosmetics, insecticides, deodorants and agriculture. And then of course there is bamboo fabric. Bamboo fabric is softer than cotton with a texture like silk. It is naturally antibacterial and hypoallergenic. It's also quick to absorb moisture, therefore keeping you dry and odour free. Pure bamboo can dry twice as fast as cotton clothes. There can be one all year round, keeping you cool in summer and warm in the winter. Having a bamboo capsule wardrobe that can be worn all year round reduces waste and is cost effective in the long term. Bamboo bedding is thought to induce better sleep patterns. But the story of bamboo fabric is a mixed bag and one you have to be careful of. Much of the bamboo clothing and bedding available in many of our high street stores is made from bamboo pulp. It's actually rayon or viscose rayon and this is created and processed using a toxic soup of chemicals and a huge amount of caustic soda that generates significant pollution. It is harmful and unsustainable. You will often see products labelled as bamboo rayon or bamboo viscose so beware of these materials. And always check that you are buying 100% organic bamboo, which has been mechanically and not chemically produced. 
Another plant like bamboo that has a plethora of uses which can be used as building materials, paper, food, oil-based products, beauty and skin care, soap, pain relief lotions, another almost endless list, and that's from hemp. Now the cultivation of hemp for industrial purposes has been done by many civilizations for over 12,000 years. Industrial hemp was a desired fibre used to manufacture rope, canvas, paper and clothing until alternative textiles and synthetics were discovered. Hemp is planted in dense crops, not allowing sunlight to penetrate, which reduces weed growth by 95%, therefore eliminating the need for herbicides. No pesticides are used due to the inherent properties contained in the plant itself. It has the ability to suppress the growth of harmful bacteria and fungi. This also means that the water quality is improved because there is no toxic runoff from the fields. And as a result of this, hemp does not require organic growing certification. Just one acre of usable hemp fibre is equal to the usable fibre of four acres of trees or two acres of cotton. And hemp matures in as little as 100 days. And as with other crops, as long as it is grown responsibly with a good water management system, hemp, it is only fair to say, is not only material of our past, but is ideal for our future. Hemp's a cousin to linen, looks and feels similar. And like linen, it softens nicely with age. It has eight times the tensile strength and four times the durability of other natural fibres. It's mildew resistant, antimicrobial, making an excellent safe yarn for the kitchen and the dining areas. Although many associate hemp as a coarse fibre fit only for sacking and robe making, hemp is actually one of the lightest fibres available, giving clothes made out of hemp a lightweight and breathable feel. Most plastic made products can be made using hemp. Hemp plastics are derived from the stalk of the plant, which makes them ultimately biodegradable and can aid in reducing landfills whilst also reducing CO2 emissions compared to petroleum-based plastics. As a result, biomass hemp plastics are 100% toxic free. Now this brings me to leather and its plastic alternatives. Leather, skin, hide is not a byproduct of the meat industry, but is a co-product. And the industry's effects on the environment due to the ever-increasing consumption has been associated with pollution through fossil fuel usage, animal methane, effluent waste and water and land consumption. And those leading a cruelty-free lifestyle will look for alternatives. But whilst ethical, synthetic leather, vegan leather, leather look, faux leather, there are any number of named products out there, they can be seriously toxic during the manufacturing process. Damaging to the environment are not a sustainable option. Firstly, you should steer clear of PVC. Quite simply, PVC is a petrochemical product that is heavily processed from start to finish and can take an enormous variety of forms. It is popular for its weather-resistant qualities in coats and jackets and even skiing equipment. Well, the first thing to know about PVC, or polyvinyl chloride, sometimes called vignon, requires oil to extract the base components and lots of energy to react the chemicals together. This means it's hugely reliant on fossil fuels, which we as a society are desperately trying to turn our backs on. Couple that with the potential health risks of phthalate and the overwhelming pressure of plastic waste on our oceans. The bottom line is, for a sustainable world, avoid PVC. Then there are polyurethanes or PUs. In some sense, the more correct term is PU coated fabric because the actual fabric component is the underlying synthetic polyester or nylon fabric that's underneath. PU fabric or faux vegan leather is made by coating that synthetic base fabric with a chemical compound paste and then drying it. The polyurethane coating is applied to a single side of that base fabric and it makes the fabric water resistant, lightweight and flexible. However, it's not an environmentally friendly paste or process. This is mainly because the coating paste has very high levels of, toxic, of a toxic solvent called DMF, dimethylformamide. When emitted during the traditional PU processing, the solvent eventually becomes a greenhouse gas. Now it's not all doom and gloom. There are some amazing companies producing really great alternatives. By switching from DMF-based polyurethane production to a water-based process, WBPU, where water is the medium used to create foamed polyurethane dispersions as the coating material for the underlying fabric, so it's eco-friendly and harmless to the body does not contain any toxic chemicals and is non-flammable. The fabric is both soft and breathable, suitable for lightweight products such as women's outerwear. It can help reduce waste as it consumes less energy in the manufacturing process than leather. And of course, it's 100%
cruelty free. And the leather alternatives just get better. Pineapple leather. It's made from the leaves of the pineapple plant and is therefore a byproduct of the fruit industry, using the leaves of the fruit which were once discarded or burned. And once the fibre has been stripped from the leaf, the leftover biomass can be retained to use as a natural fertiliser or biofuel, offering a further environmental prospect. Pineapple leather directly addresses these issues as a sustainable source textile, made from a natural waste product created with low water use and low production waste containing no harmful chemicals or animal products. Gaining in popularity, pineapple leather shoes, bags and accessories are becoming ever more affordable. And then there is mushroom leather. Mushroom leather is an environmentally friendly material because it can be treated without using polluting substances. At the end of its life, the material is completely biodegradable and compostable. It is extremely lightweight and flexible too, which makes it effective for a wide range of products. The potential for this material is far reaching and will greatly reduce the need for animal agriculture in the leather supply chain. The material can be produced in days rather than years too, which significantly reduces environmental impact. Mushroom textiles certainly have a future in many industries. It can already be found in clothing and bags and even durable furniture and building bricks. Mycelium is a vegetative part of a fungus. It is carbon negative and can be naturally dyed to any colour. Fabric created from mycelium is non-toxic waterproof and fire resistant. It can be as thin as paper for dresses and lampshades or incredibly thick for heavy duty items. And in both cases, the result is remarkably flexible and strong. So with so much potential, is it any wonder that so many companies are now working to make this remarkable material part of our everyday life? So with the materials that have been with us for centuries, to those that are new and all encompassing of the need for sustainable change, we can reintroduce balance, re-educate ourselves to what we need over what we want, because if we take away from our resources, we need to give back. If you replace just one product for your, for your household with a sustainable alternative, we will see change. And if every household globally did the same and continued to do so, we can reverse the damage. Conscious consumerism. It's your choice. Choose wisely.